Hello everyone! Recently I got so overwhelmed with so much content, so it's even difficult for me to choose what to analyze next. But today, I decided to stick to my initial plan and make a bigger video analysis of the full episode 6, combined with a secret scene from Maxity's Skibidi Saga because I promised you to do so a long time ago. And by the way, if you're confused of why I made the analysis of episode 7 of his saga first, it was because episode 7 was much shorter and easier to do, so I decided to get it done with it first, and then take more of my time to do a deep and proper analysis of episode 6, because the full episode with a special secret scene was just crazy, so let's jump right into it! What really happened to humans, and how Skibidi virus can be cured? Will Titan Speakerman recover from his friend's passing? And most importantly, are TV men really the traitors? At least in this multiverse? Okay, and now get your tea and snacks ready, and prepare to watch this video to the end, because I'm going to reveal all the secrets of Episode 6 to you, and I'm also going to point all the Easter eggs that you could have missed on your own. Let's go! And the episode starts with the sequence titled Truth, which was then changed to Reasoning, in the full version though. And what we saw in the beginning was in fact a flashback that the Dark Speaker Man was experiencing, and it returned us all the way back to episode 59 of Boom's original series, where we could see the chaotic and brutal confrontations between the Alliance forces and Skibidi army on the streets. And some of the scenes in this flashback were even harsher than in the original episode, I mean just take a look at this. And by the way, I also noticed this speakerman with the bat that appeared only by the second part of episode 68 by Boom, and he reminded me a lot of the character Negan from the TV series called The Walking Dead. So it's nice seeing both him and the Dark Speaker Man so early here, because I know that later in the original Skibidi Toilets they were supposed to become buddies from the same infiltration squad, whose goal was also to chase down Skibidi Scientist. But everything is quite different in this multiverse though, and this operation never got to happen, and instead we are observing completely different events. And by the way, speaking of Skibidi Scientist, as the Dark Speaker Man from the flashback raises up his head from all these terrible beatings on the ground, he sees his worst enemy exactly with the evilest smile on his face I've ever seen. Looked similar to this smile a lot. He then presses a certain combination on his blue-colored device on his chest and calls for even more reinforcements. And G-Toilet is also one of them. With one powerful strike of his lasers, he throws the Dark Speakerman to a completely different dimension, and the impact from his blow was so strong that it made our guy literally roll a few hundred times in one spot. And then as he finally finds powers to lift his head, he sees an even more horrifying picture. The big speaker man is getting brutally beheaded by two Skibidi mutants that were summoned by Skibidi scientist. And there is also another mutant whose face looks quite similar to me. Hey bro, are you a chasing Skylar kind of mutant or something? And next to him there is another pretty powerful Skibidi toilet which is also capable of shooting lasers. And all of these guys are wearing really eerie smiles on their faces. And I have no doubt that all this gave some real post-war trauma to the Dark Speaker Man, because this flashback was really terrifying. We even see how his speaker head is simply shaking in horror and pain as he's watching his comrades getting demolished in the worst ways possible. And then suddenly, we're getting back to reality, where the Dark Speaker Man along with Speaker Woman and the Silent TV Man are sitting in the meeting held by Cassettman. And in contrast to this awful flashback we just saw, the Speaker Cassettman's words seem to be almost a joke, because he asks the audience about the reasons to escalate the conflict between Skibidi toilets, and we know perfectly well what these reasons could possibly be. But everything is not so simple, of course. So after that, the Speaker Cassettman suggests the audience to go back for several months and shows exclusive footage from their own race to better explain their pacifist motifs. And in the meantime, we can see one cameraman asking another ironically about whether this guy is about to shut up or not. So apparently cameramen really aren't happy of listening to Cassettman's ideas at all, considering that they just lose their titan to Skibidi toilets. Then we see Cassettman using this TV man's screen as a projector for a VHS tape. And by the way, you should really remember this TV man's face, because it's going to be quite important later. And then we see something really important in terms of Maxity's universe lore. But before I'll discuss it with you guys, let me remind you to subscribe to my channel because statistics tell me that only 28% of people who are watching my videos are subscribed to my channel, while more than 70% are staying unsubscribed. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons not to miss my new cool analyses. 
Okay, so if you're subscribed now, let's continue. And the first thing that captured my attention on that recording was the date, which is the 20th of February, year 1979. And I instantly remembered the date, the 7th of February, year 1979, that could be seen in the second part of episode 70 of Boom's original series. And in case you don't remember, this was the date when the governmental forces assigned a new administrator for Alpha Hill's laboratory, which didn't make the older scientists in this complex very happy, as you can guess it by their faces on this photograph. And it's being heavily implied in here that after this date, everything started collapsing. Although we still don't know much about the details of Skibidi virus in Boom's original series. Most likely those were the consequences of some terribly gone wrong experiment that was organized and approved by the new administrator of Alpha Hill's laboratory. And considering the date of the Skibidi toilets outbreak in Maxity's multiverse, I can say that the lore of the original series and his Skibidi saga is happening in very similar time limits. Because 20th of February was not the date of a first Skibidi toilet appearance, but a timing when they broke on the territory of Russia, which is a homeland for Kassetman, as you know. Initially, Kassetman also tried fighting this new Skibidi threat, but then they found some mind-blowing information that revealed the truth to them about Skibidi toilet's origin. After they searched the suburbs for new hints or pieces of evidence, they found out that initially all Skibidi toilets were humans back in the day. And the reason for which they were turned into such horrible mutants was Skibidi virus that was spreading via the infectious Skibidi Skibidi Dop Yes song. And by the way, in this frame, we can see that people that didn't turn into Skibidi toilets yet were wearing the protective earphones not to hear this infectious Skibidi song, which prevented them from turning into these horrible monsters yet. And you know what really surprised me in this frame, though? It's that the original first part of the sixth episode by Maxity was released three weeks ago, and in it we saw real human survivors with protective earphones on their heads. And guess what happened two weeks ago? Boom himself releases the full version of episode 73, where he adds a secret scene, and in this scene, Camera Woman founds out about the remaining group of human survivors that were hiding in the abandoned Skibidi base, and they were also wearing headphones not to get diseased except for this guy in the corner that is actually contagious. Is it just a coincidence, or does Boom really get inspired by other creators sometimes? That's not for me to decide, guys, but this similarity is really incredible. Okay, and now let's get back to the episode. Cassette men also show a footage where it's obvious that people are using violence in order to protect themselves, because they are really frightened and scared and just don't know what to do. And I believe that after that, Cassette men started treating Skibidi toilets in the similar way, and I'll also return to it a bit later. But despite these attempts to protect themselves from the virus, it still spread all over the country as a plague and took the whole control over it. So the cassette men agents decided to start an investigation against it and broke into a government authorized facility where they found something completely unexpected. It was a body of an ordinary cameraman and a poster lying next to him, which served as an advertisement for the company called H Square Corporation's Hardware Heads and its goal was to revolutionize humanity with never-before-seen technology. It was also stated in this poster that cameraman and speakerman technology was America-exclusive. So that's why Rusus and Cassettman never saw these robots before in their own country. And this poster made me really curious. So are these hardware heads just robots produced by a human company and they are acting on their own? Or are they being operated by human operators after all from some distant place? Unfortunately, Maxity didn't really reveal this detail to us in this episode, so we're free to speculate on that topic, I guess. And in case you guys don't know, I have a really complex and crazy theory about the robots from the Alliance in Boom's original series, but I'm not going to repeat much from it here because I'm not sure whether it can be applicable to Maxity's multiverse lore of not. We'll see about it as the series will grow, I guess. But please write your own opinions about Cassettman and other hardware heads' possible origins if you have some cool theories about it, and I'll definitely read all of them because I'm interested in what you think. So Cassettman took Cameraman's body to their base and extracted all his recorded memories. And thanks to them, Cassettman got to know everything they needed to know about the Alliance forces versus Skibidi Toilet's confrontation in America. And all these scenes referred to multiple earlier episodes from Boom's original series. And although they really despised the Alliance's cruelty against the Skibidi toilets that once were humans, they decided not to participate in the conflict until they saw the appearance of Titan Cameraman, 
who, as they believed, could have ruined the balance of this conflict. So then they decided to move out to find the Alliance members and tell them the whole truth. So after showing this footage, the speaker Cassettman reminds the audience once again that they have to listen to him because all the hardware heads were created by humans which are now getting turned into Skibidi toilets. And this is just not fair. And two, that cameraman point out to him that Cassettmen still lack information about Skibidi virus and how to cure it, while Skibidi toilets themselves are pretty much the evil guys now and do a lot of harm. Cassettman insists on doing more research about Skibidi toilets and causes a lot of controversy with it, but they're getting interrupted by the urgent message on their tablets, which says, important information, meet up outside. And there is a picture behind these words that shows a secret Skibidi map that Plungerman found in episode five. So everyone is leaving, including the dark speakerman who's being encouraged by my speaker darling. And unfortunately, the speaker cassetteman remains alone with the TV man and a speaker man equipped with a rifle. He tries to convince TV man to believe him, who in response tells him to get out and a very thrilling music also plays in the background. And just in the middle of the debate, Cassettman gets shot by a speaker man next to TV man, which really shocked me. Does it mean that TV men don't want to have a good ending for Skibidi toilets and have more sinister plans in mind? And does this scene mean that this TV man acts isolated from cameramen and even speaker men? So this speaker man is the double agent or something? So yeah, this scene made me remember my favorite wrong theory on how TV men are traitors to the Alliance. And I officially denounce this theory for the official Skibidi series. But who knows? Maybe it's going to be true in this multiverse? That would be really crazy, I must tell you. And I'm also wondering whether this Cassettman is really done for, or is he just unconscious? Because if he was really eliminated, that would confirm my darkest assumptions about TV men and this traitorous speaker man. And then we're moving to the secret scene added to the full episode, where we see another portion of negotiations. But this time, it's Titan Cassettman who's convincing Speakerman this time. Oh my god! And he's doing a pretty good job. Better than the previous guy we saw, at least. Speakerman are actually embracing this idea, and that's why later they refuse to go on the raid for the second Skibidi base. But we'll talk about it later. During that moment, we see Titan Speakerman standing in the distance motionlessly. He then moves to another room and receives a voice message from Titan TV man who was staying in Cameraman's lab at the time, and he told him terrible news. And dude, this news traumatizes my guy even more. He's feeling guilty and ashamed for Titan Cameraman's passing, and we also see one of the most emotional scenes I've ever seen in Skibidi multiverses. And I have a strong feeling that it was inspired by some anime scene but I can't exactly recall which one. And interestingly enough, we then see Plunger Man having almost identical hallucinations at the beginning of the second part of this episode, titled Preparation. These two really cherish Titan Cameraman a lot, huh? Only the Plungerman's dream ends with the vision of Skibidi Scientist who was responsible for killing his buddy, which tells us that this guy has a desire for revenge. And it's also great seeing him recovered so fast from the injuries that he got in the previous episode. The Dark Speaker Man greets him and asks him to join the raid for the second Skibidi base found in Siberia, but Plunger Man still refuses, as he's not strong enough, and at first he and Titan Speaker Man got to receive more upgrades. And now we're getting revealed that all the cameramen know about Titan Cameraman's passing and want revenge. And with the usage of this map found by Plunger Man, they know exactly where to strike. And if you want to know what happened in Episode 7 during the actual raid, then be sure to watch my analysis on it as well. And that was all for today. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel not to miss my new cool videos. And it was me, Isotoilet. See ya!